Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sunny Go One Piece podcast. And this is a special bonus episode, as the live-action Netflix One Piece trailer has finally dropped this past weekend. And so I thought I'd take my time to kind of give my thoughts on it. Uh, this episode will be largely un- unscripted. Actually, it'll be completely unscripted. Um, just kind of my overall thoughts and impressions on this long-awaited series. And so, yeah, I guess first off, just overall, my opinion on it is it's not bad. You know, it could have been a lot worse. I I, when I first originally heard about the fact that they were making this and and especially because it was being made by Netflix, I was definitely very skeptical and I dare I say hesitant about the whole concept of a live action because, I mean, I think anime in general is a very hard medium to convert to live action. It's just the way that anime is done is inherently not very suited to be in live action because part of what makes anime so special is because of how bombastic and how crazy you can, you know, you can do things like the way they show emotion with like the bug eyes and the sharp teeth or just like the crazy effects that happen behind them kind of really adds to the the specialness and the comedy or the emotions as well as you know when it comes to shonen battle anime just the crazy scale that you can go in terms of displaying power and the the the, sort of the the stakes and, and and all of that and that's hard to do in live action because some of it just looks goofy and Especially in One Piece's case. I mean, even in the anime, it looks goofy. And that's one of the reasons why One Piece has always had a hard time catching on, especially in the West, because of how much more goofy it looks compared to things like Dragon Ball, Attack on Titan, Naruto, or Bleach. And so, yeah, One Piece has always had a hard uphill battle in terms of getting in live action. And so when I saw this trailer, I think the thing that struck me the most is it's definitely... It's still goofy looking for sure. And there are some things that uh, I think still, you know, the jury is still out on for me at least. But overall, I was actually pleasantly surprised at the fact that I didn't hate this. And I'm still somewhat hopeful that this could be a good series. And the fact that it this trailer left me feeling like that is actually a big win for me. And honestly, like, The fact that I didn't just outright think that this was stupid or this was going to fail like some of the other projects that I've seen in terms of live action. Like when I first saw the the trailer for the Full Metal Alchemist, uh, the Japanese live action uh, adaptation, I was like, yeah, this is bad. And then similarly, you know, I didn't necessarily think the Cowboy Bebop trailer was bad, but I also didn't quite get instilled with a lot of hope either. So I think this trailer does do a lot of things right. I think first off, there are a couple things that I I don't quite like or are still a little uneasy about. I think the biggest one being the the Gomu Gomu effects, like Luffy stretching. The CGI on it it still looks pretty waxy and it still kind of has that sort of uncanny valley look to it. There There is one shot where they're fighting in Shell's town where when he's like punching and uppercutting one of the marines it actually that part actually didn't look too bad it's like a split second but that action scene actually looked all right but yeah the the final shot where he does gomu gomu no pistol on albida that part <laughs> yeah it still it still looks pretty uh, iffy uh, and they even tried to do it at night cuz obviously in the in the anime and the manga that scene takes place in the broad in broad daylight Whereas they chose to shoot that scene uh, at night. And I think that's to kind of help mask a bit of the CGI in terms of the Gomu Gomu stretching. Also, this isn't necessarily a criticism. This is more of a personal preference. But it's going to take a really a lot of work for me to sort of get past the fact that they're going to call it gum gum pistol, gum gum whatever. Because, you know, obviously my entire life I, 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 I have heard it. Gomu Gomu, and I call it Gomu Gomu, and even in the podcast when I'm speaking in English, I still say Gomu Gomu, um, and refer to most of the Devil Fruits by their Japanese names. So for me, a mental hurdle will be to get past the 
get get past that and, and get used to the the English um, names for the abilities. Uh, the other thing that kind of uh, doesn't look quite as good as I would hope is Nami's hair. So I'm not sure why, but it, it looks like I don't think it's a wig, but it just in the in the two few scenes that that Emily Rudd's character Nami is seen, the hair just looks really weird. But one thing that is kind of encouraging is right after this trailer was dropped, Netflix also published a couple um, stills of each of the main straw hats. And yeah, that picture of Nami actually looks a lot better. So maybe it was just those particular scenes. Her hair just didn't quite look right or something like that. And so, yeah, I think that that's going to be fine. And then the last thing is kind of the dialogue is a little rough. And I don't know if that's because, you know, I'm so used to the Japanese dialogue and it just sounds weird to hear English coming out of these characters, even though the dub exists. And I have seen episodes of the dub, both the four kids and the Funimation dubs. But I don't know. It's not so much the sound, but like the style of dialogue. It, it, It is definitely much more, I don't want to say Marvelized. Like you have like these bantering quippiness that you have in sort of like the more modern day Marvel, you know, Marvel Studios movies in the MCU. And particularly like the scene where, you know, Luffy is saying how they, they're looking good as a crew. And then you have uh, Nami and Zoro saying, we're not a crew. Or the very final uh, scene where you have uh, Luffy calling out or calling out the fact that all good, you know, all, all heroes like call out their moves. And uh, Zoro is like, no, they don't. You know that 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 seems very Marvel esque, but I think I think that is a good choice though to sort of adapt the comedy and the dialogue to more American audiences. And and I don't necessarily hate that idea. Um, I think it's just going to be it's going to take a little bit for me to get used to. I also like how that little joke and scene kind of makes it seem like they're not going to sort of rely so heavily on the usual anime trope of people calling out their moves and maybe only reserving that for more special occasions like maybe a finisher or like a very dramatic moment where Luffy and Zoro and all the other characters are not necessarily going to be yelling out their move names all the time. I think that's not a bad thing either. It's it's definitely going to... I think it fits the sort of the tone of a live action series rather than an anime. And so, yeah, I don't necessarily mind that. And I like how they sort of lampshade that a little bit right from the get go, kind of preparing us for the fact that, yeah, it's not going to say gum gum this gum gum that, or yell out onigiri or anything like that. Um, or demon slash, you know, I think that's not a bad thing necessarily, but yeah, I I think that the, the dialogue does still feel a little stilted. Like, it doesn't feel quite as natural coming from these characters, nor does it in, you know, I guess, in the general sense, it doesn't feel quite natural. And that could just basically be down to the fact that it's just the comedy. I think where the important thing is, is and we didn't really get to see any of these moments, but it's the really... The important moments are the dramatic ones. The dialogue during the dramatic scenes, particularly during, like, flashbacks when or in in moments where characters are revealing themselves and sort of their motivation their their feelings and all of those the dialogue in those moments is probably the most important thing i don't really care too much if the jokes are you know they're not like super laugh out loud funny as long as they kind of give me a chuckle i'm fine with that you know i think where one piece mostly gets its humor from is sort of the absurdist style and i don't know how they're going to incorporate that into the live action. But I hope there is a bit more just silly stuff. And and maybe, you know, I think Usopp it will definitely add to that, hopefully, because it seems like Zoro is being played very straight, even more so than he is in, like, his post-time skip look to it. And so, because, like, if you remember, you know, before, prior to losing to Mihawk, like, Zoro was actually pretty, like kind of laugh laugh out loud guy you saw him like smiling making some dumb jokes he was a little bit more lighter but after he loses to Mihawk he's definitely a lot more serious and then definitely once you get past the the time skip he 
you almost never see him like crack a smile in fact other than when he's like really like has that like sinister looking smile when he's ready to like fight somebody but yeah as far as the i think one of the best things about this show is the casting for sure i love all five leads you know inaki godoi like he perfectly embodies luffy in my opinion like he's got that like really bright wide-eyed like spirited feeling that luffy has and even with his sort of accent like he still sounds like luffy which is pretty incredible yeah he's doing an amazing job similarly makenyu as zoro perfect like i thought i thought it would be very hard to translate zoro especially with the green hair but man they made it look really good and zoro looks awesome and the other thing too i love about the so far in the short snippet is that even the combat the way the combat is shot like we get that short scene of zoro during a sword fight with who, who I think is actually Mr. Seven. I, I thought it was Kabaji, but I think that that is actually Mr. Seven. So to kind of hinting towards the, the if there, if the show ever gets a season two towards Baroque works. I mean, this is obviously hinted in the manga and the anime, but it's never actually shown. But I think, I think that is Mr. Seven because that's definitely not Kabaji. But yeah, the one thing about that sword fighting scene is that it's shot from a wide uh a wide angle and it's it's one solid take. Like you, there's no cutting, there's no like shaky cam. Like you it's literally Makenyu and the actor um who he's fighting against and it looks smooth and really good. And but but one thing I noticed though is when it cuts to that scene with um when he's actually got the Wadoichi Monchi in his mouth and he's using Santoryu. The sword looks backwards. Like it's looking it looks like he's got the the sword curved towards him, even though the blade curve is supposed to be out towards him. I don't know if that's a mistake or what that was, but it looks really weird. But yeah, Mekanyu as Zoro, awesome. And then Emily Rudd as Nami. I think I think she she looks good. Although I really wish like they would have just kept Emily's like normal hair like she looks really good in like all the the promotional stuff and on her Instagram and so I wish they just kind of like kept her hair and maybe gave her like some reddish orange highlights to her hair because in this one it just looks like they just slapped a really <laughs> really bad wig on her it, it, I don't know what it what it is but it it does look odd but other than that yeah I like kind of her her dry sort of tone to, to Nami, especially in this earlier part when, she, yeah, she doesn't quite trust them. She's not quite as bubbly as as Nami is in the anime, but I'm okay with that. I'm sure I'm sure there will be scenes of her sort of getting along and really warming up to the Straw Hats as the series goes on because you kind of need that, obviously, for when you get to Arlong Park. And then we only get short, brief snippets of uh, Jacob Gibson playing Usopp, who looks incredible. I think he's probably, well, I don't know. Luffy and Zoro also look really good, but Jacob looks really great as Usopp. I like the I like the decision not to give him the long nose. I think that was a, a good call because it does look weird when he does when he has that long nose but thankfully i mean naturally he seems to have actually a, a bigger nose than most people not that that's a bad thing or anything but i love the fact that yeah like he looks he looks like the iconic usopp with with the with the slingshot and, and sort of that blue and white striped um wristband and the overalls he looks so good and even even in the short like facial mannerisms like he's got it down i think he's going to be an amazing usopp and then finally we get to see a little bit of tess skyler as sanji and again i think it was a good choice not to give sanji his iconic curly eyebrows because yeah there are just some things that just wouldn't translate to live action and i like that in some places especially in the more like outlandish things that they toned that back down a little bit to give a little bit more grounded realism for this live action adaptation but yeah i i'm particularly excited to see taz because i you know i've been following him on 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 social media ever since he was announced as sanji and the dude has been training like crazy 
in, in terms of like martial arts and, and sort of, you know, his kicking style. And also he's been taking like cooking lessons and, and whatnot to sort of get the, the chef side of Sanji as well. And so this dude has been putting in a lot of work for this role. So I'm really excited to see that. And yeah, he looks great too. And, and I think I think all five of them really mesh well. And I love seeing sort of the... This is obviously outside of the show, but I love seeing the the camaraderie that the five of them seem to have built outside of the show. And I hope that really comes across in the sh- in the series, which is really important to see. And then the other really great thing I, I think that stands out about this trailer is the set design, the costume, the hair, makeup, like the production of this show. You can't say that is lacking. Definitely Netflix has put their money where their mouth is in terms of that aspect because all the sets and all the ships are mostly, for the most part, practical and they look incredible. The Going Merry looks amazing. You know, I, I wish they hadn't made the the figurehead as like kind of creepy, but I can understand it though. I mean, they are pirates and so a pirate ship should look more intimidating than cute which the going merry is and i think uh the other thing is the baratier looks awesome the baratier looks so good like i cannot wait to see that th- that episode where the baratier gets uh featured because my god that sh- that ship looks incredible like especially both from the exterior where you see that shot of luffy sitting in it in his special spot on top of the Mary's head. And then on the interior shot where you see Sanji kicking who I believe is going to be full body, who's got a gun pointed at somebody. Or I guess it could be Ging. And so, yeah, I think it, that that whole thing looks amazing as well. The music through the trailer was good too. I, I actually really enjoyed that music. It, it's obviously not anything used in the series, uh, the anime series, but it's actually, it, it captured that feeling of adventure and hope pretty well. The other thing I really liked was, and this is something that was pointed out uh, on on social media afterwards, it's not like I noticed this, but the the costume, the, they, they actually wear, particularly Luffy and Usopp, they seem to change their clothes, and a lot of the clothes that they they wear are taken from some of the past color spreads. And so you see Luffy in like the overalls and like the flower sort of patterned uh, button up shirt. And you see you see those throughout the, the trailer. And so it seems like they're at least for this live action, they'll kind of break up the, the monotony of the characters all wearing the exact same thing aside from Nami. And you really can kind of see the variety in the costume design in, in Luffy and Usopp. But yeah, I think... You know this this trailer has a lot to to love. You know the the Lord of the Coast um, Sea King that that one shot where we see of Shanks saving Luffy that actually looked pretty good too. The CGI on that was actually really good. That nice balance of like yeah this could exist in real life, but it also still looks very much like how he looked in the manga and the anime. And speaking of a live action adaptations that were pretty good was buggy so we get a really good shot of buggy's face and yeah i gotta admit he looks really good i think one of the cool things about that is that he actually looks scary and his nose his red nose isn't like some sort of prop that's like put on his face like just like in the story itself that's actually his nose. And so it does look like it, it's very fleshy and like has pores in it. And it's just a big red brown nose that's just attached to his face. And I like that they went the natural route with, with his nose because that is something he's very insecure about. And yeah, he kind of looks like a mixture of Buggy and like the, the Joker, um, which is not a bad thing. I think where... It'll be interesting to see is how they handle Buggy's devil fruit, the Barabara no Mi, is because it could potentially look really weird. And I wonder if they will do the the Barabara festival and where he loses all his middle parts and all he has are his extremities and his head. And so you get that mini version of Buggy. 
uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do that or if they will do that. But yeah, I think this trailer really hits everything, I, 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 I think, really well for the most part. Sure, it does look a little goofy. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that this trailer was a home run by any stretch. You know, I still have a lot of trepidations about the series because really, this is just a, a very surface level look at it. You know, we don't really get to see a lot of the meat of what makes One Piece One Piece and, and what makes it so great. And that's the story and the characters. And, but I think it does balance that those elements pretty well in terms of the, the tone, the look and feel, and, and just sort of the characterizations. I think that part they get right. Really where it comes down to is how they handle the story and sort of the character interactions and the character development. Because obviously that is the most important thing. That's the heart and soul of One Piece. And what makes it so great is how those things will play out. You know, I, I, I'm particularly concerned about the length of the series because it is only slated to be eight episodes long with basically each sort of mini arc consisting of an episode. You know, you'll have basically the first episode is Romance Dawn where you get to see Luffy's past and what i would assume would be his meeting with kobe and alvida and then you've got like shell's town being one episode you've got syrup village with one episode i think baratier will get two episodes and then you've got along park which will probably get two episodes and then log town and then obviously in the trailer we get to see the iconic barrel uh moment where they all declare their dreams just as they leave log town and, and are ready to head into the grand line uh, it was interesting to see that scene portrayed in bright sunlight, though, as opposed to the storm uh, that it is in the manga and the anime, which I find interesting because, like, from a thematic level, I like the fact that it was in, you know, in the storm, like, as they were basically showing that they're they're heading for dangerous waters, but it, it's it's nothing compared to their the, the the will that they have for their dreams. And also, logistically speaking, it's it's stormy because Dragon caused the storm so that Luffy could escape. And so without that, I wonder if that scene maybe takes place at a, at a slightly different moment, like maybe like uh, a day after it, or maybe the, the sequence of events that take place to, for them to escape Logtown are different. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they actually introduce Smoker because he's probably going to be the hardest devil fruit to adapt i mean he's only i mean when you really think about it east blue only had four devil fruits luffy's gomu gomu buggy's barabara alvida's uh, sube sube and then we have smoker's uh, moku moku and so a smoker obviously being the logia type user and the only one that we see for a while it'll be interesting to see if if he's introduced and adapted into this series but, you know, that's that'll be beyond the scope of this uh, podcast. But, yeah, I overall, I'm very, I wouldn't say very optimistic, but I am hopeful. I could still easily see this thing failing quite, quite hard. And the other thing I, I am also concerned about is the fact that Netflix is so gun shy about green lighting second seasons unless like a show is like a mega hit like Stranger Things or uh, Wednesday you know, anything even a middling success, Netflix is very hesitant to green green light a second season for some reason. And so I am wor I am worried that if One Piece unless One Piece is like a huge success, that it won't get a second season. But then again, I mean the series isn't out yet. If it's good, it's good. It will it will attract an audience, I think, just based on how good one piece is the anime and the manga is and so if they can somehow capture that and adapt it into live action i think it will be a success and it seems like you know everybody who's involved in this project seems to be incredibly passionate and the fact that oda himself seems to have the final say on a lot of the decisions with this and you know he even had had that message to the fans about how the fact that he doesn't want to launch it with without being satisfied himself with it. And so, you know, and the fact that he says that, that this may be his last chance to sort of 
make One Piece uh, more well known in the West and with through this series. And so I think he's he's very invested in it, as well as the people, you know, the showrunners, the cast, the crew, the producers. I think everyone, it seems like, is very passionate about this. And, you know, even people like um, Makenyu and, and Emily Rudd were already huge fans of the show prior to even being cast in this. So I think definitely a lot of the, the people involved were, were very passionate about One Piece. And so I think this whether this series succeeds or fails, it won't, it won't be because of the efforts of the people involved in making it. It's just, I mean, anime is just really hard to adapt into live action. I personally think that it's near impossible because we haven't really seen a good one. And the only closest one, in my personal opinion, that I've seen are the Japanese Rurouni Kenshin adaptations, the, the, the movies that they did. And that's mostly because they basically turned Kenshin into a very grounded and realistic samurai action movie, more so than a bombastic shonen anime. They took out most of Kenshin's like crazy moves, the, the craziness of his villains and whatnot. And, and again, Ken, Kenshin is was a series that was easy to sort of make that decision with. Whereas, I mean, I never saw the whole movie, but like Attack on Titan looked terrible. Uh, f- the Full Metal Alchemist movie was bad, was beyond bad. Death Note and Cowboy Bebop, obviously from Netflix, is not a good harbinger <laughs> of things to come in terms of this adaptation. But again, I think... I think this is uh, something worth watching out for, at least, you know, something that I will be watching in. And I, I, yeah, yeah, I might actually cover this in a few episodes when this show comes out in, uh, in August. And so, yeah, stay tuned for that. But those are my sort of quick and unfiltered thoughts about the series, uh, new trailer. So if you did enjoy this, send me a like or comment. And if you want to join me on this journey of rewatching One Piece, please consider subscribing. Check out my Instagram and Twitter account at Sunnygo Podcast for updates of when I post new episodes. And yeah, as always, thank you for taking the time out to listen to my podcast. Stay safe out there, and I hope to see you on the next episode. Bye.